like to tell you a story that was told to me by a good friend of mine about Jimi Hendrix. And it takes place in 1970, September, in Germany, where Jimi Hendrix is headlining a concert there. And in between sets, uh, somebody shouts out from the crowd and says, Jimi, you're the truth! And Jimi responds in a very interesting way. He says, I'm not the truth. I'm searching for what the truth is. And if there's anybody here that knows the truth, I'd like for them to come up on stage and take the mic and tell us. Now, the story continues that nobody responds. There's an awkward silence, and I would imagine Jimmy, being a professional musician, goes about playing his set. Now, unfortunately, the story doesn't end well. About a week later, Jimi Hendrix was found dead in an apartment um, in London. Now, I believe there's a lot of us, if not all of us, that at some point in our life ask ourselves and ask others around us, perhaps, what is the truth? What is truth? Well, I plan on sharing a little bit with you today about what I believe the truth to be and how I found it and how I think it can help you as well. Now, in the Bible, uh, the book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come through the Father except through me. So it's very plain here. Jesus says he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. He's basically the answer to Jimmy's question. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Now, I can imagine how Jimmy's life might have maybe perhaps gone differently had somebody had the knowledge or the gall or the boldness to get up on stage and to share with him and the crowd there in Germany about Jesus, to tell them that he was the truth. I can only imagine now, what would you say? What if I asked you, what is the truth? What would your version of this story look like? I believe that we all search for truth in our own way. When we're little kids, we ask our parents, why is the sky blue? Why is the grass green? Why is water wet? Uh, there's no end to the, to the curiosity of children. Now, as we get older, the, the questions tend to get a little more serious. They, uh, they, uh, they, they tend to get a little heavier as life goes on, and then we start to you know, uh, ask, the, ask the tough questions, as it were. But I believe that with this knowledge, the Bible says that my, my, my people perish for lack of knowledge. With this type of knowledge, I believe this, this leads to life and to life more abundantly. It certainly has in my own life. Now, a very popular verse in the Bible is John 3.16. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God so loved the world. It's not that God loved a select group of people or, or, or even or even just a, a specific country. God loved the world. He loves you so much that he gave his only son to die for you. To be basically the payment for all the sins that you would ever commit. Even though you weren't even born when Jesus was hung on the cross, God knew that you were going to come and that you needed to have a, a, a way to come back to the Father, to come back to Him, to have an intimate relationship with God, just as He had always planned. Now, God has a plan. He has a plan of, of prosperity. He has, a, has a plan uh, to, 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 to lift you up and to see you do amazing things. I always think about God's love as a, as a glass. You know, it's, it's as if we're, we're all holding our glass out. And, and, and God is, is in a perpetual state of, of pouring out his love. The Bible defines God as love. So we're holding out our glass, and, and, and God begins to, to pour this out as, as we, you know, we, we come to a place where we submit ourselves to him, and, and, we, and we ask Jesus to come into our heart, and we accept the truth of who he is and why we need a Savior. And so God begins to pour, pour out as we're, we're holding our glass, and the glass becomes about three quarters full, and we, we, we expect God to slow his pour up a little bit, but instead he just keeps looking right at us, and he just keeps pouring. And there's all this, you know, it's, our glass, glass is overflowing, and it's going out all over the floor, it's getting on our hands, and, and, and it doesn't even phase God. He doesn't even notice. He just keeps pouring. And that's just God's character. God so loved the world. God so loved you that he, he gave his only begotten son so that you could be saved. Now, like I said, at some point we all ask the tough questions. What is the truth? Is there a God? Why am I here? What's my purpose? Well, I'm here to tell you today 
I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that he is our Savior, and that he died for my sins, and he also died for your sins. And so what I would like to do is I would like to give you an opportunity to say the same prayer that I prayed. I prayed it several times, and it seems to never get old. Because not a day goes by that I don't realize that I need Jesus and I need, I need a Heavenly Father more and more and more. Because I'm not perfect. I'm working at it, but it's, it's, I'm not quite there yet. But we're all working towards something. We're all a work in progress. And I believe that there are many of you out there today that are watching this video curious as to what, this has to, what any of this has to do with Jimi Hendrix. But the fact of the matter is that Jimi, Jimi asked the tough question. And unfortunately, there wasn't anybody there to answer it for him. Now, I can't say what happened to him after he died. For all I know, he could have called out. I, I'm not sure. But that what I want to do is I want to give you that same opportunity that, that perhaps Jimmy ne never had, at least as far as the story is concerned. So what if you died today? If this very second, as soon as this video ended, you just stopped breathing, your heart stopped beating, where would you go? Where would you spend eternity? Well, I'm here to tell you today, friends, that there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. That you were never meant for a devil's hell. You were meant to spend eternity with God in heaven, with Jesus, in his love. And if you're willing, and if you find yourself at that place where you're desperate enough Come to that place of, of humility and say, and say, God, I need you. Jesus, you are my Savior. I believe you are who you said you are. I believe that you died for me. If that's you, I want you to say this prayer with me, with your heart and your lips out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Set me free. Thank you, Jesus, that you died for me, and thank you that you're coming back again for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the lost, a hunger for the things of God, and a holy boldness to preach your gospel. I'm saved, I'm born again, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Friends, if you said that prayer, as a minister of the gospel, I'm here to tell you that all your sins are forgiven you. And that when times get tough, when you start asking the tough questions, always run to God. Never run away from Him, because He's there for you. He's got plans to prosper you, to see you succeed. Now, if you said that prayer, I'd also like for you to either like this video, or just leave me a short comment at the bottom, so I can keep tabs. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to message me, send me an email, but I want you to know that God loves you, and he does have an awesome plan for your life. Thank you.